welcome back. Um, today's intro is going to be kind of long, so if you just want to skip to the end, I wouldn't blame you. I'm probably doing the same thing, but, but today I'm going to be making DIY family Christmas presents for my entire family. I have a very big family, so that's 10 individual families with 10 individual personalities, but I wanted to go big this year. I wanted to go personal this year, and I wanted to do something to show them that I appreciate them, and that I love them, and that I'm thinking of them, even if we don't speak on a daily basis. And also... My family is no stranger to re-gifting, but they're not about to re-gift my gift because I'm doing DIY family crosswords. You've probably seen those on Pinterest, but they're more of a Scrabble type thing. But since I did 10 of these, I had to go cheap. And if you haven't watched any of my videos, I'm a very cheap person as is. So when the Scrabble stencils popped up for 20 bucks, you know what I said? I was like, no, nope, no. Nope. I'd rather hand write every letter individually before I spend $20 on some letters, okay? So I think I spent a little over 50 bucks for all 10, and I think I spent a little under a week doing all 10, but that's because every single one is very personalized for that individual family. For example, here's one for my uncle. My uncle is one of my biggest supporters besides my grandpa and then the family that lives with me, because you know, they kind of have to support me or they'd be dealing with it every day. But his is a fluid art, so it took a couple days to dry on its own, and I'm not going to show you the entire thing because it's his last name, and it's disrespectful to expose people. So, there's this, and I wanted to show you this so that you know you don't have to go very modern. If you want something creative in hanging up in your living room, make something creative to hang up in your living room. Don't go modern if you don't want to, but the video I am going to show you is a little modern, but it's a little personal, so... You don't have to go that way. You can do stained wood if you want to, but if you don't want to, there are creative ways to do it and you will see that at the end of the video with every individual one I did for the families. They're all different, all 10 are different. And this is just something I wanted to do for my family. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's get to the video so you can watch me make Christmas presents. I got these wooden tiles off of Amazon. They're three by three tiles. They were 12 bucks for 80. I will include the link in the description. You could always get larger or smaller or thicker tiles, but I'm really cheap. So I went with the cheapest ones I could find. And you wanna lay these out sort of like upside down so that when it, you turn it upside right, it's facing the correct way and all the names go in the correct order. So the top would be what's closest to me and the bottom would be what's closest to the camera, if that makes more sense. The next step would be gluing the wooden tiles together. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue and applying it very generously to the end of the tile. Because if not, then um, it's going to get glued to the cardboard. And that's not fun for anybody. Hold that for 30 seconds. And then you get out your handy dandy duct tape and tape the two ends together. Continue this throughout the entire crossword and let it sit for 30 minutes before continuing on to the next step. This next step is pretty optional. It's merely based off of how thick your tiles are. Mine were very thin. So I needed a supporting and backing. I went to Home Depot, bought these paint stores for like 78 cents. And basically what you wanna do is take the tape off that was holding the tiles together, glue the paint stores to wherever the tiles ended meet up, that way there's a support. And it's basically the same step of glue and tape and complete this throughout, let it sit for 30 minutes or overnight. It's really up to you if you wanna get it done fast. 30 minutes, be very careful. And if some of it falls off, re-glue it. Um, you could just wait till it's set in stone and that way you don't have to re-glue anything, but I'm not that patient, so I only let it sit for 30 minutes. For the next step, I'm taking hot glue and gluing brackets onto the back of the crossword. If you're going to use a chain to hang this, you don't have to do this step. It all depends on how you want to hang up the crossword. For this next step, I'm applying a couple coats of basic white paint to the tiles. Depending on how thick your white paint is, you might only have to do one coat, but mine's not very thick, so I had to do four. And just repeat this until you have the color you want.
For this next step, I'm taking a dry paintbrush and some black paint to have this weathered look. And what you want to do is dip your paintbrush in the black paint and sort of scrape all the excess paint off to where there's very little paint on the brush. And take this back and forth against the tiles until you have the kind of effect that you want. Bro, like for real, just ignore James. He just wanted some clout, like for real. He just wanted to be a part of the video. Um, and the next step is to take your letter templates and outline the names before you start to paint. this step you do want to use a very thin brush that way the color doesn't go outside of your lines and you might actually want to do a couple different coats that way it's not see-through and you can't see that background So I chose to do KU colors for this piece because those are my grandparents' favorite colors, so red and blue. And basically what you want to do with this is if you're going to transition into colors like that, you want to figure it out beforehand. How I did it was oldest person got to keep a solid color and the youngest did not. So for example, Sandra is older than Anna, so she got to keep a solid red, while Anna didn't get to keep a solid color. The last step is to spray it with some sealers so that your artwork will last forever. Yeah. 